Hello everyone, I am Parinder Kaur and in this video we will be discussing about the oil extraction and the refining process. So now once the oil has been extracted uh, by either the mechanical method or the solvent extraction method, whatever oil we have, we call it as crude oil and this crude oil generally cannot be consumed as such for consumption as an edible oil. For the process, we have to undergo refining process for this crude oil so that it can be rendered fit for consumption as in it is free from any, uh, any off order, any off flavor, taste, uh, color, all of these. So refining of oil, once the crude oil has been extracted, we have to refine it before it can be used for consumption in order to remove the free fatty acid, phospholipids, pigment and the volatile components. So to remove all of these, we are doing this refining process of the oil so that we can remove any free fatty acids, phospholipids, pigments, volatile compounds, all of these can be removed from the oil. So now if you look at the refining process over here, so the refining process consists of five basic steps. So first we have the crude oil and then we are doing degumming. So degumming and neutralization or neutralization is also known as deacidification or we can say neutralization. So basically these two are done together, degumming and the neutralization process. So first degumming as the name tells, removal of certain gums. So we will be removing the gums, lecithin, phospholipids. They will be removed in this process with the help of water and phosphoric acid. So we are adding water and phosphoric acid. What will happen is along with the water and the phosphoric acid, uh, this gums, these gums will be converted into hydrated forms. They will become into hydrated form and these gums then can be removed, right? So what we are going to do first, we are adding water and uh, we are adding some amount of phosphoric acid as well so that we can remove all the gums, lecithin, phospholipids, all of these can be removed because with the addition of water and the, uh, and the phosphoric acid, it is converted to hydrated gums which can be removed from the oil. Next step we have is the deacidification which is also known as neutralization. So as the name again tells, removal of the acid. Right, so what, what acid basically we mean over here, the free fatty acids which are present in the oil. As we know, free fatty acids are not desirable and if free fatty acids are present, the taste, odor, all of this of the oil as well as the shelf life will be affected. So we do not want the free fatty acids. So in order to remove the free fatty acids, what we are going to do, so basically the free fatty acids, so in order to neutralize th these acids, if we add a base, like NaOH, right? So if we add a base, neutralization will occur. So what we do basically in this step, we are adding NaOH so that the free fatty acids can be removed. Now the third step that we are having is the decolorization. So decolorization or we can also call it as bleaching. So in this step, again, as the name is telling, removal of the coloring pigments, any color which might be present in the oil. So for example, the oil may be containing certain carotenoids, right? So for example, mainly xanthophylls may be present or maybe sometime chlorophyll pigments, small amount may be present or certain other compounds. For example, some metal ions might be present, which might give a different color or a darker color to the oil that is not desirable. So in order to remove these coloring pigments, what we do, activated clay is being added in this step. So the reason for adding activated clay over here is that this clay with the process of adsorption, right? So all of the coloring pigments, all of these coloring pigments will be adsorbed on the surface of these activated clay. And as a result, what we will do is we can simply remove this clay uh, by filtration we can remove these clay and what will happen is along with these activated clay, certain coloring pigments will be removed because they will be adsorbed on its surface. So we will be removing the carotenoids or certain other coloring pigments can also be present. That is just one example. Then next process we have is the deodorization. Again, as the name tells, removal of the odor giving compounds which might be present in the oil. So the oil might be containing certain aldehydes, ketones, uh, small hydrocarbons, all of these which might be giving it a, a bad odor, a different odor which is not desirable. So in order to remove that, what we are doing is direct steam is being passed. 
So steam at high temperature is being passed and with the steam eventually what will happen is all of these uh, compounds they will be vaporized and removed from the oil. Now the last step we have is the winterization. We might or might not follow this process. This process is basically in order to remove the triglycerides or we can say triacylglycerides to remove in, to, in order to remove them. So what can happen is because of the presence of these triglycerides, the oil might solidify at a cold temperature. So we do not want the oil to solidify at a cold temperature. So as a result, winterization is done. That is, we are basically subjecting the oil to low temperature. So as the name tells, winterization, it has something to do with low temperature, right? So low temperature, maybe around 4 to 10 degrees Celsius, we are storing our oil. And once we are storing our oil at a temperature of around 4 to 10 degrees Celsius, what will happen is basically the triacylglyceroids will solidify. And once they will solidify, we can easily remove it by filtration. So winterization is followed by filtration. And after that, we obtain the standard edible oil which is free from any gums, phospholipids, which is free from the free fatty acids, which is free from all the coloring pigments. So the color of the oil will be rendered lighter and which is free from any off odor because aldehyde ketones are being removed and which is free from the triglycerides. They have been removed by winterization followed by filtration. As a result, the oil will not solidify at a, at a lower temperature. So this is how basically the refining is done. So now if you look at each step one by one, first one we have was the degumming. So in the degumming, we were removing any phospholipids, phosphatides, lecithin or gum. Basically, we are removing all source of the phosphorus in the oil. So what happens is oil is heated at 70 degrees Celsius and then soft water is added. As we saw, we were adding water and we were adding phosphoric acid. So what will happen is water is added around 1 to 3 percent is added. So water attracts the polar phospholipids group, right? So what will happen is water will eventually attract all the polar uh, phosphatides group. Basically, it will be converted into the form of hydrated gums, which can be removed. Now, temperature, why we are heating it? There is a purpose of heating as well. So temperature is being utilized to disrupt any emulsion that may form, right? So once we are removing all of this, there is chances that emulsion might form, right? Between the oil and the water, emulsion might form. So what uh, we are utilizing temperature so that there is no emulsion formation. We are disrupting any emulsion that may form and so sometimes what can happen is some of the compounds they might not separate in the aqueous phase and as a result for them we are adding 0.02 to 1 percent of phosphoric acid. So this phosphoric acid 85 percent phosphoric acid is basically added 0.02 to around 1 percent. So with this we will remove the all the gums. So next we have is the neutralization. So as we have already seen this process is also known as deacidification that is the removal of the free fatty acids. So why basically it is being done in order to remove the free fatty acids from the oil and it will also help to ultimately reduce the smoke point and increase the shelf life. So access, so sometimes whatever amount of alkali is required, sometimes some more amount of alkali may be added as a result to neutralize the phosphoric acid which we had added in the first step during the degumming. Some traces of the phosphoric acid might be present, right? So in order to neutralize that phosphoric acid as well, which is from the previous step, sometimes we might add some excess alkali. As a result, what happens is when the alkali is added, sodium salts are being formed of the fatty acids. So when we say sodium salts, basically soap is being produced. Uh, and as a result, what can happen is when they are converted into the sodium salt of fatty acid, they can be centrifugated and heated. Once they're heated and centrifugated, we can, after centrifugation, we can easily separate these. And this process helps to achieve free fatty acid as low as 0.05 percent. So if the free fatty acids are 0.3 to 0.4 percent, we can reduce it to as low as 0.05 percent. Thus, it will have a very, very long shelf life. So this is basically the neutralization process. So next process we have is the bleaching process. So again, bleaching process is also called as decolorizing, right? Decolorization in order to remove the coloring pigments. So we are removing. So uh, in the last step, we saw that we were removing also the phosphoric acid, which was added during the first step. Here also, we will also remove any residues of phospholipid, fatty acids, soap. So every step, 
if there is something remaining from the previous step as well that is also being uh, being taken care of it uh, adsorption process basically takes place as we had seen activated clay is being added which will because of the adsorption process it will absorb the coloring compounds so the compounds are bonded by fine powdered absorbent at slightly above 100 degrees celsius under the vacuum so what will happen is at slight at a temperature at a higher temperature uh, all the uh, uh, the absorbent powder which has been added the coloring pigments will be absorbed on its surface so for example any carotenoids can be removed with major component being the xanthophyll mainly the xanthophylls are present which we want to remove which might give oil the darker color they all will be removed so clay binds so basically the absorption uh, we whatever activated clay we are adding it might bind the coloring pigments physically or chemically so certain van der waal forces or forces might be responsible for the adsorption and as a result the mixture is then filtered to remove the clay with the bound contaminants right so then we will filter it and simply after filtration we will remove whatever clay we had added and with this clay because the particles have been adsorbed on it they will also be removed the coloring pigments will also be removed next step we have is the deodorization so we have discussed that deodorization means to remove the small aldehyde ketones and all of that which might be giving an off odor so basically steam at the high temperature is being utilized over here to vaporize undesirable volatile compounds we want to remove any undesirable volatile uh, components so mainly it is essential for those oil which we want to be utilized as a salad dressing or for cooking frying margarine and shortening for all of these uh, we do not want the oil to have any kind of off odor so we we are going for this process and what we have as a final product we have a bland product which is free from any different uh, or undesirable odor which is free from all of them so last step we have is the winterization process which we have again already discussed that we are removing the triglycerides mainly which settle out above 4 to 10 degrees celsius right so they will settle out at generally 4 to 10 degrees celsius and it will prevent the oil from solidifying at low temperature as a result what will happen is the oil will not solidify at lower temperature because the triglycerides have been removed okay so oil separates into the liquid and the solid fraction once we are storing it at a lower temperature of let's say 4 or maybe 5 degrees celsius the oil will basically be divided into two parts one portion which have been solidified and one is the liquid oil so very easily we can remove them by the process of filtration right so what will basically happen is the two fractions can easily be separated by the filtration process and hence it is also called winter salad oil we are also calling it as winter salad oil because these oil will not be solidifying in uh, at a lower temperature so with this basically we end the oil extraction and the refining process and i hope that this topic was clear to you thank you